This episode of the Smoke Pit brought to you by Grill Your Ass Off Seasoning. I would highly recommend that if you're using it to season the booty, don't use the mango habanero. Save it for your chicken. It's spicy. <laughs> Visit grillyourassoff.com, use promo code SMOKEPIT to save yourself some money. Welcome to the Smoke Pit. Hey. What up, though? Here we are, back for another fantastic episode. Mike fucking Sensi. Hello. You have things to talk about. Oh, shit. I thought we were going to do a little banter, but okay. Here we yeah, go. yeah, we can do a little banter. Yeah. Well, what, 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 what do you want to do? What's on your mind, buddy? Uh, I mean, just you know, making the fans happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what do the fans want? The fans want more AJ is what they want. And what else, specifically? More AJ. That's it. Nothing specific with AJ? You know what, Daniel? He's answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ask and answer, counsel. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, so I will just introduce to the court um, the results <laughs> from this polling question that yes. we put out. Hey, what do you guys want us to talk about? Mm-hmm. And the resounding result was more shitting on AJ. Yeah, that's true. Um, the poll also included the fact that people thought I was very wise. <laughs> I yeah, didn't but see how that does at all. that not reflect in your decisions? Look, there's though. at least one person that said that, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Coaches don't play. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what else do we get? More uh, Mista Y moments. Mm. Uh, military spouses, civilians don't when talking to veterans. I'm not quite sure what they want there. Okay, well. Well, well heck, we while you're going down the list, let's just pick one and go with it. Okay, uh, geese, fuck that. Fuck them. Blocked. <laughs> 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 okay, so here we go. Uh, and you can actually see this uh, on our story if you follow us. Uh, drunken stories with AJ with heinous details mm. and uh, I put that on a story with a picture of him falling <laughs> into uh, the Pacific Ocean when he's, we were in Australia he's very wet <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's important to note that I do far more terrible things when I'm sober and uncoordinated than I do when I'm drunk yeah because we were, we were talking earlier about how we got plastered drunk and decided to uh, river dance when mm. we were in Ireland mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the Irish loved it I didn't decide to river dance. My legs chose to river dance. <laughs> he felt the call of the Blarney Stone. <laughs> we were we were in a club called Copper Face Jacks, which we right later learned is kind of where the locals and uh, foreigners interact. It's the Cottonhead Road of Ireland. I'm, I've been told. Okay, yeah, yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. So we went in there, and I it was like four. It was three in the morning at some point before I was like, this is starting to really be terrible. So I'm going to drink more. Okay, and I got absolutely for schnickered. <laughs> and this wedding party showed up. It was uh, a bunch of females doing a what they, uh, stag party. There's a, a female version of a stag, a hen party. That's right, it. right, right. Yeah. yeah. They were doing a hen party, and they were like like 40-year-old doctors or something. But I was decently buzzed at one point, and I saw one of them had all these sticks and bullshit in her hair, and like a lot of the other ones had sticks and bullshit in them. <laughs> yeah. And okay. I walked over, because I was bored, and I went... Hey, uh, what's with the whole Midsummer Night's Dream thing you got going on up here? And she was because like, Because oh. he was bored. You're right, exactly. Yeah, bored so of bored. not having lips around his penis. Exactly. Yeah. It really was because I was bored. Anyway. Yeah, so bored of not having your anyway, balls in someone's mouth. Anyway. Like, what's woman's Why else do you approach your, a woman yeah. in a bar? Like, exactly. Let's ask her stance on extradition in China? Like, come on. She, she was past have. my age range at the time. <laughs> I only go, I only go, <laughs> at the time, I only went plus or minus five years. At the time. Anyway. So <laughs> I said, uh, what's with the whole Midsummer Night Stream thing you got going on? And she's like, oh, my God, you're the first person to notice that. And I was like, that's funny because I'm from a uh, country where we don't teach that anymore. Mm. And you're from a country where they wrote that. So, uh, yeah. So we, we, we you were uh, there. So yeah. we all got <laughs> and absolutely too. terribly <laughs> shithoused. And we ended up in one of the smaller rooms in the middle of the club, and it was like 100 bajillion degrees in there. Yeah, and Irish clubs don't uh, don't close until like 5 o'clock in the fucking morning. Yeah, the That's sun was up. coming up before they're like, "Hi, right, lads, it's time to leave. And I was like, it's time to leave. It's time to pass out on the floor and yeah, yeah. die. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, and since we're on that story, I'd like to also point out that earlier in the day, before we started drinking, by earlier I mean like 10 p.m., mm-hmm. we walked in the club and there was nobody. Like it was oh, okay. empty except for like six dudes. So we hung out for 20 minutes. Of course then, you did, yeah. And then finally Dan went... Nothing but dudes. <laughs> Dan goes, you know what? Fuck this. I want to dance. So he begins... As I am one to do. I've seen him do it a lot, actually. He begins you know. to bachata. <laughs> As and, he's one to do. <laughs> and within about 30 seconds, he was surrounded by a circle of Irish men who were chanting him on like this was a football game. And mm. when I say football, I mean football. Ooh. Right? And he, without stopping to the dance... Just did this like part the seas gesture with his hands and went, 
Get out of the way. I'm not dancing for you. <laughs> I'm dancing for the Irish whores. <laughs> I'm not your little lucky charm. <laughs> the, I- the Irish whores who had not arrived yet. Yeah. yeah uh, we actually met a, a pair of twins uh, that were Irish. and um, Twins? You, yeah. Yeah. You, you had your connection with one. I had mine with the other. And the thing was, is that, like, they were just the worst. Like, <laughs> Why? Uh, absolutely the worst, because they're from America. Oh, fuck But it. the one that AJ was paired off with had uh, an Irish accent that mm. she had developed in the last, like, six months of living there. Oh, it was okay. so bad. And her My sister, Irish accent was better. Right. <laughs> and her sister was like... I don't know why she's doing that. We're from New Jersey. <laughs> like, I don't know why she has a, an Irish accent. As soon as she said New Jersey, we should have just been like, okay, well, yeah. let's go get that hep C medication. Exactly. Yeah. And get out of here. Your trash state. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, long story short, uh, well, you know, we banged them both. And <laughs> right, nice. Yeah, because that's, that's what we do. You nice. Know? Irish eyes be smiling. And, yeah, so... That's uh, the, the ballad of that. I don't know how that was a bad story about AJ. I don't know. That, I like that to just point out. Like him, like he impressed the Irish with his dancing and then got laid. Like, yeah, right, how, exactly, how is that a bad yeah. story? I like to point out a couple things. One is yeah. that was almost a decade ago. And okay. the reason I point okay. that out is yeah. because I want to point out the longevity of our friendship, which yeah. brings me to the next part of the story, mm. which also includes that, uh, I, that trip, but not that evening. Um, I got absolutely rip-roaring hammered one night. And I was doing a pretty good job of not dying in a ditch, right? Sure. But I was trying to, like, I got the last person that we were with into their cab after last call, and I was, like, stumbling back to the hostel. And I'd like to point out before Dan corrects me that I was going the correct way, and I would have eventually gotten there anyway. Oh, okay. But, so Daniel comes out of the mist, right? And I'm doing this thing where I've got one eye closed, one eye way open. Yeah. My hands are out. <laughs> on both sides of me so if i if i kind of slide into a wall or into a tree like i'm blocking my face with yeah. some with some space that's smart because yeah. i am so hammered that i'm giving myself a pep talk in my head i'm like don't embarrass chesty puller do not embarrass chesty puller don't be a shit mar- you are a marine yeah, yeah, yeah. right marines do not fail to make the objective rally point you will get to the hostel you will continue to walk forward this one dan comes out of this like, out of the mist and shadow yeah yeah right coming towards you he comes running down the street and he's like oh my god i thought you were dead <laughs> turns out he had gone back to the hostel which was the objective rally point sure. no 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 i i had uh, fucked off with these three british girls mm. yes but after yeah. that that's a different story i'm talking about the part where you woke up the frenchman yeah yeah that was in the uh it was the same trip but just a different city it was the the white chapel district of uh of london which is where jack the ripper uh had all his murders right all of the murders. All of the murders. <laughs> I mean, it might have been one place or another, but please continue. So, anyway, Dan comes flying out of the woodwork looking for me, out of the mist and shadow. And he says, I'm so glad I found you. I thought you were dead. I just got to you in time to save you from Horace and Jasper. Which, <laughs> if you don't, are unaware, the two the two henchmen from uh, Corella de, um, 101, 101 Dalmatians. Dalmatians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, I was like, Hor- you're being over dramatic. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and then as soon as I said that, I looked over and there's like, a tall, skinny, Weasley-looking guy and a short, pudgy dude, and they're yeah, both yeah. wearing, like, the Horace and Jasper hats and cloaks. Turtlenecks. And turtlenecks. <laughs> and I was like, those are definitely henchmen henching, henchily in the corner. <laughs> I was like, get me out of here. Save me, Daniel. Yeah, because I'm running all over. Uh, and again, we're in literally the murder district of, uh, of the... Of, uh, of the UK. Full mm. of the murders. <laughs> yeah, like this place is famous on account of the murders that happened there. They're a big deal. And so I'm at the top of this hill, and I'm, I'm just panting because i've been running this whole time and i look down and i finally see him and it's aj and he's walking like a baby giraffe <laughs> wacky wavable inflatable tube man <laughs> in the middle of a tornado <laughs> and so i'm like oh thank god i found him and then i look over and there's these two shady characters under a street lamp yeah and they look like horace and jasper yeah. and they're like pointing at him yeah and like ah, oh, yeah let's murder this guy let's murder him steal his skin for a coat yeah, and so at the top of my lungs with my uh, my most uh, profound Marine Corps voice, mm. I said, AJ! <laughs> and that, you know, scared him off. Right, right. And then I come galloping down the fucking hill like a, <laughs> like like a, a warrior. Horse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> full stride. And he got to the point where he was so drunk that he was speaking with a deep British accent. So there was a point where we were hanging out with a bunch of different people from a bunch of different countries. Mm-hmm. And the last guy that I pushed into a cab with the girl he was with to ensure that they were going safely where they were supposed to go, was this British... No, he was a German engineering student uh, named uh, v- uh, Valentin. So once I got him into the cab, right, I had to pee. Like, I had to go. And I didn't mm-hmm. want to go on the side of the road because I'm from New Orleans. I know what it, ta- it smells like when tourists piss all over your city. <laughs> you say you know what it tastes like? 
I know what it smells like. <laughs> he knows plus, what you don't want to get arrested in like a foreign country for for peeing on the road, you know. It's London, right? I'd go and have some hot tea and take a nice. Yeah, exactly. Like they'd come over and while you're peeing, they'd grab one end of your dick and then hit you in the fucking the the center mass with Actually, the Actually, peeing club. in public is known as hot tea over there. So really, yeah, no, it's not. No, you see, <laughs> you see, they wouldn't want to cause a bother though, and I wouldn't want to cause a fuss. <laughs> a fuss, exactly. they're, but they're gonna bother your penis with their nightstick, is what I'm getting. Well, at. Well, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> So I needed I needed to go, and so I went back to the the club we had just come out of. I went up to this bouncer who was absolutely massive, right? Imagine Idris Elba without any of the handsomeness or charm. No, right? I, I refuse to do that. So same same size that and general terrifying. build. Terrifying, right? Like Idris Elba kind of like puts you at ease. This guy was not putting anybody at ease. I see. But so in a British accent that I'm a little too hammered to be able to do right now, I told the guy, I said, uh, you know, hey buddy, I, you know, I just need to use the head. Mm-hmm. I understand it's last call, and you're trying to kick everybody out, and mm-hmm. a lot of people are drunk. I was like, I promise you I'm going to go straight to that door, which is in your eye line. I'm going to make my business. I'm going to do my way straight back here, and then I'll be out of here and out of your hair. Can you do the accent for us? I need to hear the accent. I, I need I, to hear it. I just said I'm too. I'm a little too. No, we, we heard what you said, but we need yeah, you to do it. Yeah, but we need yeah. you to do it. You threw it out there. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it maybe later on in the show. Okay. What do you mean? Uh, well, okay. I'll, I can't, I'll I can't just do it like like off the cuff Why not, out though? of nowhere because- it takes a little practice. Cheerio, like, bloke. Good fucking pudding morning. See, it's my name's easy. Garrett Jones, and I'm a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else says cunts too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't it. I was just going with the I whole was thing. Like, okay. I, you're just like the word cunt. Yeah. So the uh, the uh, the moral of the story is <laughs> is that he got so drunk he slipped into this very convincing British accent. Right. And he's six three, and he's walking like a like a baby giraffe down the road, mm-hmm. and I find this large, uh, very drunk man. And I bring him home to safety. Wow. Humble, courageous, <laughs> drunk. <laughs> I love it. So uh, speaking of, uh, of drinking, we, uh, we put a poll on our Instagram page, mm. the Smoke Pit Podcast, Yep. as to who would you want to give the best man's toast at your wedding? Yes. We're available February 29th, just saying. Which is today. Yep, which is today. <laughs> and nobody booked us. Kind of rude, but whatever. Super rude. Yep. <laughs> so- uh, AJ, Mike, would you mind pulling that up? Oh, because I think what we should do is like I'll read one about you guys, and then you guys can read one about someone not you. Okay, so here we go. One follower says, "Okay, hear me out. AJ is definitely the one giving the toast. He is awesome storyteller. Dan is one hundred percent being the best man, though, because who wouldn't fucking want him sitting next to you? And it's a no-brainer that Mike would be the priest solely because of the irony of priests being virgins." And also, he's an RP. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, uh, Mike is a born again virgin now. This is true. This so, is true. So, you know, he is uh, he is, he is uh, a man of virtue. <laughs> yeah, I am. A, I'm a man of God in 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 a couple ways. Okay, that's good. Uh, I like the comment that says, "Well, it depends." Mike Cincy would give you a drunk speech full of warmth, uh, full of truth and awesome, shameful stories to warm your heart up. Uh, Dan would make the whole place cry and laugh at the same time. He would also bang the. <laughs> the maid of honor if he was single in quotes <laughs> and then aj would give you a historical medical speech full of nice stories and serious tone while turning on the electric butt plug and acting like nothing happened <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> a good step one. into a slim gym <laughs> uh aj all right i like one from uh jimmy underscore from underscore az <laughs> now, now we gotta pay him yeah exactly <laughs> great no, don't he's get a free plug you pay him in cream <laughs> pies get it plugged Hey, Pop Smoke official. If I wanted to be wanted an actual speech that would be profound and heartwarming, but entertaining, mm. Mike Sensi official. If I want a dry, humorous speech, but still genuine, however, will hit on the bridesmaids and speech may be slurred. <laughs> Apollo thirty thirty one. If you wanted that raw and uncut speech, and you wanted to just let the in laws know who the fuck is really joining the family. Mm. <laughs> I like it. That was all good. Co host Mike. But I would want Dan trash smashing a bridesmaid and AJ lecturing me why this is a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> Just for those viewers who are interested, for twenty dollars to the Pop Smoke page, I will call and lecture you on anything you want to do being a bad idea. Wow. Wow. Because that... most of you, and just like most of us, yeah, have a lot of terrible ideas. <laughs> A Pop Smoke exclusive. <laughs> oh, my God. That yeah. was a huge offer. <laughs> <laughs> Notice I didn't give my phone number out because you have to sign up for this service. No, because you don't monitor the pages. I do. I'm the one who has to deal <laughs> no with shit, all these exactly. messages. I gave... monitor the pages. Look at this one right here. I, I hearted this one when I was at work the other day. <laughs> <laughs> it says, 
<laughs> it says, oh, you know what the best part about this is? It says, uh, it says I want to say Dan, but AJ's $20 vocabulary might just win. Oh. Like that's that's how that's how egotistical I am in my subconscious that I was just like ah that one I hearted that and I was like oh yeah that's about me <laughs> <laughs> of course I hearted it Mike uh, this one says it all depends Dan if I want to be respectful AJ if I want a tall guy who's going to drunkenly bang or fall onto the maid of honor mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that reference erroneous <laughs> as long as I can get uh, Mike belligerently drunk which shouldn't be hard. And I want a great comedic speaker who can give my in-laws the coronavirus than him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike Sensi official. Actually, uh, real quick, um, you changed your handle. I did. To try to combat some of the um, the catfishing. Yeah, I did. Which is really fucking shitty for me. I know. Because I send your profile to everyone. I know. Because you know, I like to gas my friends up. I, and and I instead of it. being able to just type at M Sensi. Right. Now I have to type at Mike uh, Sensi. Uh, first off, if you Gay boy at, official. <laughs> we'll leave out the gay boy, and yeah. then you'll get get more traction. But yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. No, that, that's, a, that's a, a fan art page I've dedicated to you. Oh, oh is it? <laughs> yeah, I write a lot of fan fiction for you. No, dude. You know, we've it, talked about is that. Is that you doing it? <laughs> the ones that I send you, the oh, ones I that I write. I see okay. a lot of it. So uh, this one was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mike Sensi official, natural born storyteller, pop smoke official would gas you up the most. Over under three point five, be that as it may, from Apollo thirty thirty one, would have in his toast. I like it. So Agreed. He's saying that the over under would be three and a half. Be that as it may. <laughs> you know, you can't really do a, a half of a be that as it may during a toast. You can have it during our conversations. Mm-hmm. No, be that as it, and then you fall on a fat chick. Yeah. And she cushions your fall I generously. Mean, does she have to be fat, or can she just be ugly? Be that as it may. Well, see, here's the thing, though. I've been criticized, uh, particularly by my girlfriend, by making fun of the uh, the women that you've chose in life. The rotunda rosies. Yeah, but however, I specifically <laughs> said on an episode, I've seen you pull hotties, so I don't understand why I'm being attacked like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I will tell Sam directly right now Yeah. <laughs> that I am not shallow, so I appreciate the interior of a woman, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he appreciates the interior, oh, right? Yeah. Anyway. Several interior walls. <laughs> <Those> anyway. Sugar <laughs> walls. The, the, the point is that, uh, hot or not. Call I've, him the Kool Aid man. He's smashing them walls. <laughs> hot or not, I've had some good women in my life and I've had some terrible women in my life. So sure. the outside and that particular outcome are not always connected. How can I tell if she's beautiful on the outside until I've been inside her mm. to see the beauty there? That's right. I guess that's the mystery we're all going to have to solve. Be that as it, smash. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Daniel. Sir. How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? One. A one. A two. A, two, a three. <laughs> Cream pie. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> hey, he, he can't. We, we're not supposed to direct that energy at you anymore because you're a good Christian boy now. <laughs> so, true, I am. Yeah. So he has to direct it at me because that outlet has to be, like, yeah. there has to be a steam... Yeah. Release, otherwise Dan's head will explode. It's true. Much like a cream pie itself, it must be released. Yes. <laughs> it's fair. Um, so my lady said, obviously your best friend would be the best man at your wedding. And I was like, how are you going to be both the Don't best man We all saw the, the adorable bride. comment. Don't gas yourself <laughs> up. We all saw it. It was cute as fuck. Yeah, yeah you're disgustingly adorable. We get it. Exactly. So just just be happy for me, all right? I've been what are you talking about? Drama. I'm so happy for you. Now shut the fuck up. We're, ha- <laughs> we're happy for you all the time. Exactly. I'm happy for you so much, it's giving me stomach problems. Mm. Uh, Dr. Quinzel <laughs> said, so what has to be done is to get all three of them together and let them do a live commentary at the event. Oh, that's a good idea, actually. I've, I think based on the amount of money they're willing to spend, yeah. and we not expensive, but enough to cover our expenses to get there, mm. I think uh, I think we'd absolutely do like a wedding commentary. Yeah, we'd bring the house down. Tears, laughter, urine, yeah. all of it. Like oh, we'll bring, it. bring our own s- kit, like park yeah. in the corner of the reception, get housed, and just, yeah. Oh, yeah. just sure. roast everyone as they walk by. Be like, Grandma Ethel's got some hip problems. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like um, like we can have our booths set up. Mm-hmm. So like, if they come up to AJ, he can give them like fashion advice. You know, right. be like, you know, it's very gauche to wear white to a wedding. Sure, because he uses words like gauche. <laughs> they come up to me, and I could help. You know, help them with like maybe their uh, their VA benefits. They uh, bring small dogs to you, and you could pee on them. Like, oh, listen, all right, one time, and then he was an absolute <laughs> miss. <laughs> one time. <laughs> I want to pee on you. <laughs> drip, drip, drip. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what I had to do at the time. 
All right, uh, any other ones you want to guys read? Uh, one from Facebook that was very direct. It just said, uh, Dan for the wedding, Mike for the reception, AJ after everyone is drunk. That's exactly how we are best used. <laughs> I agree. Holy fuck. Yeah, yeah. The wedding, the reception, and the honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. I, I don't do that pre monocta crap, okay? <laughs> No, I was saying, like, I would be, you know, the wedding, Mike yeah. would be the crazy party at the reception, yeah. and you would be the 45 minutes of cunnilingus on the honeymoon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Use the tongue more. That's all he'd just be whispering into his yeah. ear. Oh, so, like, my job would be to stand in the corner in the shadow and just whisper advice? It wouldn't be a job. I would 100% yeah. do that. that. You're right. That wouldn't be a job. Yeah, exactly. When yeah. you do what you love, you don't That's work a day right. in your life. That's right. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so any any other ones you want to read, or are we moving on? They were all good. Look at them at yourself on Instagram and Facebook. This episode brought to you by CombatComeOver.com. Pomades, uh, beer oils, products for your face. <laughs> and uh, other hairy parts of your anatomy, mm, yes. like your legs, you filthy animals. I think if you need to put pomade <laughs> on your legs, then maybe you should not be seeing that girl. Hey, short season's coming. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Brother man, mm. I took this fool kayaking one time, yeah. and I specifically bought him like sunblock. And he didn't wear it. Yeah, his fucking legs were nuclear for like three fucking. To months. be fair, if I step out in the sun right now, I'm a, I'll just disintegrate. I was <laughs> I was in that kayak for an hour and a half in a shady river, and it looked like roasted. I've been there. Like I've I couldn't. There. I was walking like literally like a newborn giraffe because my mm. shit my my meat was just oh, I've been burnt. There. I was like, why didn't you use the sunblock? And he was just like, no man fears the sun. That's right. I fear no man, <laughs> and I certainly don't fear some gaseous object hanging around in space. Icarus was a pussy. <laughs> yep. So use our discount code SMOKEPIT to save yourself some money. I like it. Okay, Mike. Mm-hmm. So you had uh, a bit of, a bit of training recently. A, a wee bit of training. How'd that go? Oh, it was terrible. Uh, no, so uh, once a year, uh, fun fact about chaplains and RPs in the Navy, we have to do a professional development conference every single year. And it is just the worst, and I just got back from it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not, it's pretty much it. It's it just, was the worst. It's always the, it's so, it's just death by PowerPoint for 10 hours. It's just a terrible time. But, hey, when's your next one? Uh, a year from now. Because I, okay, that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, I mean, it could be plus or minus, but <laughs> I definitely want to get with whoever's making the PowerPoint oh, and man. insert my own slides. Oh, okay, and you know what? No one would even pay attention because everybody falls asleep anyway. <laughs> So, but anyway, part of this training um, was uh, sometimes there's like scenarios because, you know, Chapman's RPs are supposed to be upstanding uh, men and women of the service. And uh, what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you, buckaroo. <laughs> um, and so they kind of give us these scenarios for like ethical, uh, like, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh Decision making? Sure, decision making. Thank you. Yeah. yeah Jesus, I want to hear drowning, Dan. <laughs> and um, so two of the scenarios they gave us, um, I want to run by both of you. And I be- okay. before I do any of the scenarios, just know they are so over the top and embellished, they just wouldn't happen. So you have to wrap yourself into that. Yeah. Era. And, I, and I refuse to hear them beforehand. Ex- no, that's true. They haven't heard these. So these are two. Because I wanted pure shock factor. Yes. So in this scenario, Dan, you're going to be an O3 chaplain. Okay. And AJ gets to be, uh, we'll say, an E3 RP. So you're an RPSN. Congratulations. So I'm you four years ago. Four years ago. Well, I don't know how Navy. <laughs> I don't know how Navy shit works. You were me at one point. Yes. Yes. Well, their their ranks are based on their tattoos. Yeah. And but see, the thing is, is if you're poor and you're in the Navy, which you're poor because you're in the Navy, Facts. you spend what little money you have on fucking like Paps Blue Ribbon. <laughs> so if you have enough maturity to budget enough money aside for tattoos mm. then they know you're responsible enough to be a petty officer i like it I like, if that's how it worked i should be a master chief by now but <laughs> <laughs> if, if we had enough responsibility to tattoo our bodies and <laughs> drink too much then we would get promoted faster is that what you're saying that's yeah, how yeah, that's yeah. how we do it in my navy loving it anyway so scenario. scenario uh yeah you're the chaplain jinx you owe me a cream you're pie <laughs> 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 you heard it you heard it here first ladies and gentlemen <laughs> to be distributed to a person of my choosing <laughs> Find us on. And you can't back out. <laughs> and you cannot back out. Oh well, I mean, he could back up. <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah, because um, uh, <laughs> somebody left us a review. It was just like, oh, I love the smoke pit. It's like my ears are being cream pied. Yeah, that was funny. And that it was a like. dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's what's up. Yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, scenario: You are the battalion chaplain in RP for a infantry battalion. Not a far stretch. You guys know the culture. Yes. You are in the field in Bridgeport, California. It. Summer or winter? It is winter package. Fuck. Exactly. So you're already pissed off. So it is one of the mornings where the staff and COs serve in the chow line. So it's like near, it's near index, right? Because they don't do it before. And so you are 
in the back of the chow line, you and the RPN chaplain and staff and COs are serving, and the company commander and company first sergeant are all here. So ev- so big wigs of the company are there. And you see at the end of the chow line, a staff sergeant takes a Marine's Pop-Tart off his tray and throws it into the dirt and says, earn it, bitch. And everybody sees this, and nobody says anything. Chaplain, we'll start with you. What do you do? I personally take that staff sergeant aside and then get his personal information and recommend him for a medal <laughs> for leadership because <laughs> that kid was probably a fat body and shouldn't right. be eating the 400 calories per Pop-Tart <laughs> right. of pure sugar. Okay, and that and that's fair. Our PSN, what do you do? Uh, <laughs> you guys remember Friday? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I would do something similar to that. I'd run over there and be like, damn, you got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> you know why? Because being part of the group, right, being being one of the troops right. is how you get them to trust you, right? Now, I could counsel that fat body on the side because sure. we're pretending on Mike for a couple years ago. I could be like, listen here, Tubby. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So Mike is my RP? No, no, no. I got to redo is. my I answer. No, AJ is. No, AJ no is. I just going to say, like, I'm too busy making out with him <laughs> to worry about what's going on. So oh, Wait, so if I was your RP, you wouldn't make out with me? Hell no. He You're taller do, than me. He would do strictly butt stuff. That's so emasculating. Exactly. Like, That's true. He does have to look up into my brown eyes. Yeah. yeah, he likes to have this scenario like, if we were gay, you'd be the fucking receiver. Yeah. And I'm like, how how, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> now, did I, look, I'm not saying receiver, right? Because it's mm-hmm. 2020 and, and you know, we could we could pass. A little bit of take, a little bit of give. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, it doesn't have to be unfair. It could be a, an equitable relationship. Right, I'm just saying. stop talking about butt sex long <laughs> enough for us to answer Mike? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I answered him. Okay, so my my real answer. Yeah, yeah. I pull that staff sergeant aside. I'm like, brother man, are you trying to get fucking NJP for hazing? Mm-hmm. First of all, lock your body. Mm-hmm. Second of all, <laughs> <laughs> correct yourself. There you go. <laughs> no, but seriously, you pull him aside and be like, look, I get it. Like, the it's the Marine Corps infantry for a reason. Like, nobody joins us expecting a rose garden, you know? Like, there's a point of pride in the fact that we're in this. But if you're doing that shit in front of fucking God and everybody, like, brother man, you're going to kill your career. Yeah. So, like, I'm not saying take people aside and, like, haze them in private because we've seen a lot of big scandals that way. Sure. But, yeah, just be smart about what you're doing in public because you're no longer just an NCO. You're a staff NCO, Mm -hmm. and you need to set the example that you want others to emulate. Yeah. Okay. AJ, your real answer, or was that your real answer? No, my real answer is, is, you know, you got to pull that kid aside. You know, staff starts getting taken aside. That's one thing. Pull the kid aside w- without doing it in front of everybody because you want to embarrass him further. Exactly. But, like, just go check on him later and be like, hey, man, I, I know that was kind of a dick move on his part. But, you know, like, don't say let me fix you because sure. you know, maybe staff sergeant was just being a dick and he's a perfectly good guy. Mm-hmm. Right. But, yeah. like, like kind of just talk to him and make sure he's doing OK. And Now, if you were the chaplain, if you were the officer, how would you respond? Yeah. I mean, pretty much like you did. Yeah. OK. Because here's the thing. There's a difference between discipline. Right, like making people do like push-ups to remember to not lose their rifle places. Sure, and there's and there's just embarrassing somebody because it makes you feel like a big guy, right? So there's a difference between incentive PT and being an asshole, mm. and being an asshole doesn't serve a purpose. Yeah, and I, I remember one of the ways that we uh, that we would fuck with our higher ups so that we were kind of cool with. So like in that instance, like if I was the RP, like I'd immediately run over there and knife hand the kid, be like, "Well, fucking staff sergeant said, earn it. Get on right. your fucking face. Right. He just gave you a fucking order. Oh, I staff sergeant some shit. Yeah. Who's your fucking team leader?" <laughs> <laughs> I actually said if that was me. Well, again, I say this knowing this scenario would not happen. A staff NCO would not do that in front of everybody like that. Oh, he most certainly would. I've yeah. clearly seen no. stuff like that happen. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Well, okay, no, I'll I'll, I'll give you that. It First, will, I would be like, "Slay that pig." No, <laughs> yeah. you're trying to say it's not gonna. It might not happen now. It may not happen now, but it. So in the scenario, like the whole reason you have to get involved as a chaplain in RP is because nobody did anything. Somebody would say something. It would either be uh, instant hands because that happens, or it would be like a fellow staff and or an officer correcting that staff sergeant. That's what makes it an impossible scenario because no one would do nothing. I get that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, to one of the things that we used to do is that like when first sergeant would walk by and we'd be with like our staff sergeant, we were in, like sergeants. Yeah. Like as soon as first sergeant would come around the corner, all of us would drop on our face and start screaming. Good, I yeah. staff sergeant were doing <laughs> push ups, <laughs> and staff sergeant would be like, first sergeant, I didn't, I didn't, I tell him to do that. That's pretty good. <laughs> and first sergeant's like, sergeant sharp, you want to be a corporal? I'm like, no, first sergeant. He's like, get on your feet. Hi, first sergeant. <laughs> That's so, good. so these scenarios are set up like the Kobayashi Maru. <laughs> how how so? So it's supposed to. No, I'm sorry. That's a bad reference. Yeah, that would be a non-winnable yeah. scenario. Okay. You're talking about an, an unrealistic yes. but plausible scenario. All right. Okay. So we'll do scenario number two. 
Send it. And Let's the, do your second scenario. In the, this scenario, we're going to say AJ is the officer and Dan, you will be enlisted. Gross. I know. I don't like it. So you are at, what was it? Okay. So you're in a Roll 2 hospital in Afghanistan. Uh, Roll 2? Roll 2. No, he's saying he doesn't know what that means. Oh, it's like, well, how it's, would you? Yeah, yeah. The role is like the level of uh, trauma care that yeah. they can provide. Oh, okay. So like a role three is a full on hospital that's yeah. got like dental services and yeah. stuff. Oh, so kind of like the the shock trauma ward or yeah, kind, yeah, kind of. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you're chaplain RP butt fucking around, you know, a role two hospital, and you get you get uh, people coming in, and it's three wounded Marines and one wounded enemy combatant from an IED. So, and for some reason in this possible scenario, you only have one pint of blood to save one of these people. And in the middle of all this confusion, I know, <laughs> in the middle of all this confusion, uh, the, an, an, an intel officer runs in and goes, we need to save this enemy combatant because he has information that is useful uh, to save future lives. Now, <laughs> what do you do? So I, I would like to point out the fact that even the chaplain command <laughs> <laughs> acknowledges the fact that the role of a cha- of fucking RP and a corpsman are interchangeable. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got him. <laughs> because it is my choice to give the pun of blood. Like, where is the corpsman? So that's what makes it. So, <laughs> okay, I'll, so I'll, I'll, I'll add on. You actually have a good point there. I'll, I'll add on to that as soon as you guys answer up front. Okay. Well, real quick. So you're telling me you have four people, yeah, yeah. right? There are three U.S. military, one enemy combatant. Yeah. They're all equally injured. Yes. All right, so, and you need blood to save one of them. And, and you only have enough blood to save one, apparently. Now, now again, you guys aren't the doctors. Yeah. You are the chaplain and RP, which, why we're in a hospital? I don't know, just putting around. We don't have any real power, but what would you do to influence? That's kind of the scenario. That is a, that is a difficult situation. <laughs> That's what. And this is what they put you through? Of all the times I've been in a hospital during a scenario like that, mm-hmm. not once has the chaplain been sitting there trying to influence the surgeon. Exactly. That's why they, That's why these scenarios are so over the top and embellished. They just make us talk at our table. This is the whole conference. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, so um, the the it, it, it's kind of hard to say it, uh, because if, if we're establishing the point that after triage, they are all uh, expectorant. Yep. Uh, and wait, expectorant is like when you're coughing. Expectant. No. Expectant. Yeah. Okay. Expectant. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So <laughs> expectorant is a medication that causes you to cough. So you AJ get and his twenty dollars words. Exactly. I think that's herpes medication. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we would know, but <laughs> just whatever AJ gave me the other day. Okay. So <laughs> you don't have a joke. Fuck you. <laughs> we actually so. discussed this earlier today. Oh, really? <laughs> about the fact that when he goes to Paris, I need him to pick me up some more doxycycline because nice. You guys go through my stock so fast. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right. Okay. <laughs> so in that instance, I uh, I ask who is the most junior Marine. Give that to him. Yeah. That that would be my opinion. And for that, fuck the enemy combatant. Mm-hmm. Like, how how am I supposed to look somebody in the face and be like, sorry, you know, I let your baby boy or your baby girl die because we tried to save an enemy combatant. Yeah. Like, I get the point of fucking of the intel, mm-hmm. but like. If you were the intel officer and you got hit, and they're like, "And hey, no, nah, but this, this dude, he he knows where an HVT is mm-hmm. in this war that we literally just signed a peace <laughs> treaty with the Taliban in." Yeah, let's discuss that later. But yeah, yeah. So that that would be my advice: is who's the most junior marine? Uh, give them, and if it's like they're all boots, I'd be like, "Well, who's got the biggest dick?" Yeah, exactly. Because he has to be saved. <laughs> I I would agree with Dan on this. <laughs> the right, biggest dick. It, yeah. No, give it to the junior guy because you know potential, right? He's got the the longest longevity, sure. right? And you can't be like, oh, well, this guy's a higher rank, so he deserves to live more. Like, I don't know about that. Yeah, but I get that. Like, he's got more value to the unit as, like, a higher ranking. But, like, if I was a sergeant, I had two of my boots bleeding out next to me. Right. And they tried to give oh, me the blood. for sure. Yeah, dude, yeah. I would fucking shoot myself. Oh, that's myself. way different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, be yeah, yeah. I'd pull my K-bar different. and slip my own fucking that's throat. and be different. like, you're not going to put that on me for the rest of my life. Exactly. But as far as the intel's concerned, like, how often do we get intel like that? And the intel officer or the het guy was <laughs> like, this is the most important intel we've ever yeah. gotten. This will win the war. Exactly. And then it turns out the guy's like, yeah, Mohammed bin Mohammed bin Mohammed bin Bazir is like three houses down, and he knows all of the intel. We get there, and it's like two goats and an old woman. Yeah, yeah. So after I uppercut the intel officer, <laughs> I mean, like, you mean to tell me the guy who blew himself up with the <laughs> right. IED, he's the one that we have to save? How about fuck yourself? Yeah, yeah. And then I give him a second uppercut for good measure. That's right. I, would, know, I got old reliable and John Belushi right here. <laughs> so stupid. I would say as the as the officer in the group, I wouldn't swear as much because they're yeah, not as are, fun. You are a chaplain, right? <laughs> and and I will say, even we did have a chaplain once that had been a former infantry platoon commander. Yeah. And he once gave us the "Don't beat your wife or kick the dog" speech. Of course. And he at the end of it finished with, 
And if you do, I'll take these crosses off my collar and I'll come beat you myself. <laughs> Jesus will let me. That's yeah, fair. he's like, I'll turn back into a line officer and I will destroy this company. <laughs> that was uh, Captain Crittenden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good dude. I liked him. <laughs> All right, so what would you do? Uh, oh, I just, I just said whatever. But I was gonna add on. I was gonna add on to yours because part. Of, so the whole scenario we're discussing it, and then it's like scenario one B or whatever. It says like. Oh, the RP suddenly, it's just they jam us into these scenarios, RPs, because we're just forgotten people. And so they jammed us into this scenario by saying, um, oh, the RP realizes, oh, we have the potential for a walking blood bank. The RP has to decide that. And so w- now what do you do as the officer? So not only in this hospital full of corpsmen and doctors had nobody thought of that, but the RP who had just happened to be there was like, well, we start a walking blood bank. That's how much they jam us in these scenarios. So Yeah, because I, um, I, I remember hearing something about a, a ranger medic was mm. using um, um, healthy rangers to give blood transfusions to wounded rangers oh, yeah, yeah. while they're waiting for a medevac, yep. as were our corpsmen. <laughs> <laughs> Just poured Gatorade in the wound. <laughs> well, they're, they're over there waiting until everybody clears up to pick the Pop-Tart out of the dirt and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> we had a corpsman that literally kept, carried a pack of Marlboro Reds in one of his grenade pouches, Yeah, yeah. and he's like, if you're on the ground bleeding to death, I want you to have a, a, a good way out. I was like, Hey, I'm not a medical guy or anything, <laughs> but uh, isn't isn't cigarettes like a, a like a blood thinner? Like, yeah, wouldn't yeah. that make you bleed out faster? And he was like, "Yeah, I didn't think of that." <laughs> like, you trash, doc. Get nice. out of here. <laughs> nice. Yeah, like doc. What are you doing in the stack? Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me that shotgun. And get to the back of the stack. Actually, a chaplain had a. He was a salty commander. Chaplain had a joke for the for the group. He stood up and he goes. He combined the two scenarios to break the ice because this was so stupid, and he goes. Um, he goes, what you want to do, he's like, you take that you take that pint of blood and you pour it on the ground. You tell the enemy combatant, work for it, bitch. <laughs> 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 I thought it was a good joke. Nobody else laughed. Joke. I thought it was really good. <laughs> that was a solid joke. <laughs> I thought it was good. <laughs> okay, so do you have any other scenarios? That's it. Because I would like to pose a scenario to you. Ooh. Uh, so as I said, like I'm uh, the one who, who fields the crazy messages oh, yeah, yeah. a lot oh, of times. Yeah. Oh, my God. So one dude uh, slid into the DMs uh, talking about how he wanted to seduce you with chicken nuggets. It was very out of context. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Go on. So and uh, after he was done with that, he said, quick story about nuggets. Uh, context, I'm a volunteer paramedic. And uh, so I thought AJ would get a kick out of this. Rah. <laughs> I, uh, I called lights and sirens to an overdose. Uh, upon arrival, my team leader established that this young man urgently needed his stomach pumped after taking 26 codeine tablets. Wow. How many codeine tablets is like a bad thing? Uh, a <laughs> lot less than that. Yeah, uh, way less than that, I'd imagine. <laughs> like probably, I mean, it depends on the milligrams of the tablets, but yeah. I'd say probably anything over than two and you're already <laughs> having a problem. <laughs> so I got him to the ED and watched about half a gallon of mushed up nuggets pumped out of him mm. uh, along with a copious amount of alcohol medication. Delicious. So, yes. so uh, ED, is, is that a term for something? Emergency department. Oh, okay, because I thought it was erectile dysfunction. Like, so I, I fixed that's his erectile right. dysfunction, <laughs> and right. as I was jerking him off, he started puking up all these nuggets. <laughs> that, that's another show. That just sounds like a Saturday for me. And so additionally to that, they determined that the kid had about 40 chicken nuggets uh, in his stomach along with the drugs and alcohol. I'm surprised they let the story of mine get released, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I would love to see an emergency department that has the time to look at the amount of mush that came up and be like, yeah. That's like, <laughs> like that's that's equivalent to the scene in uh, Rain Man where he drops all the toothpicks <laughs> and he goes, three hundred and seventy six toothpicks. Like that's, the, that's the time this RP is walking around that hospital and goes, that's forty chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, how do you know? I know what forty chicken nuggets vomited up looks like. Don't question me. Yeah, he's it's part of his uh, ORM. Yeah, it's yeah. like how much money is he spending on chicken nuggets <laughs> that he can't keep down because <laughs> he's drunk. That's right. I okay. mean, I've seen him keep down some nuggets. There was that one show we did a couple of seasons back where we were talking about how he orders DoorDash too much, and in the middle of that conversation, we hear <laughs> and it was the DoorDash guy with like, well, was, yeah, wings. That was wings. Yeah. wings. Yeah. yeah, I love chicken. It's good for you. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> thank you for that <laughs> random uh, story. If you have any more crazy paramedic story, uh, please send them to us so Absolutely. we can get AJ's opinion. That's right. And then another question that we got. And uh, I'll kick this over to AJ first. Mm. Uh, if you had not joined the military, uh, what would you have been doing otherwise? Uh, so if you had not joined the Marine Corps, what would you have done with your life? I would say, well, first I'm going to say realistically, I'd probably be in a ditch somewhere because I was broke as hell. And I had no, like, I wanted to be a Marine since I was like six. My my family's got 10, like 30 generations of military service. So this is kind of my thing. But if I didn't do that and I had like the opportunity Law school. Okay. 
Uh, how do you think you would have paid for that? Um, I don't know. Maybe sucking dicks. Hey. I, I was gonna say ZJ's, right? ZJ's. What? If, if you have to explain ask, you yourself, can't it. <laughs> explain yourself right now. If you have to ask, you can't afford it, Daniel. Oh my god. <laughs> but I mean, seriously, like I'm, I'm sure there's a way. Like there's plenty of poor people who've gone. Like as long as you, you, yeah. But you're a white man. It's not like you would get a scholarship. You have a leg up. I could have gotten a scholarship. What school? Name one right now. If you're so white, name a privilege. LSU. <laughs> Shit. I could have gone. I could. I could have gone to Louisiana State University. And there was a scholarship for tall white men. I mean, not specifically for tall white men, but I'm sure I have other talents that would have proved useful. That's usually okay. a basketball scholarship. Yeah. I, hey, there you go. I could have Larry Birded my way into law school. Don't or, you uh, use his name unless, <laughs> <laughs> unless you know the facts. <laughs> the man's a magical player, right? You don't have the skills. You just don't. Well, I don't now, but we're we're pretending an imaginary scenario. Ain't I thought I thought about going into medical like full time, like being a doctor, but there's a lot of sadness in that profession. Yeah. yeah. And I already have my own amount of sadness that's pretty high, so True. I was like, I don't need to have the bucket overflowing with sadness constantly. I mean, yeah. kudos to all the people who do it. Like, obviously, that's a hard job to do, and I have a lot of respect for those people. But yeah. So what what I'm gathering is that you would have tried to find a way to pay for college, then work your way in maybe as like a legal assistant, and then put yourself through school, then eventually um, try to try to become like a legal counsel. Yeah, I would have either been uh, a legal counsel. What I what I might do in the future, what I might might still do is is join a lobbying firm for groups that need kind of representation yeah because we have an episode that we haven't released yet where we had uh somebody who lobbies for uh, the cannabis coalition right uh, for for the va to do tests on the, the effects of you know marijuana and cannabis on things like ptsd and i know you right and i know you guys will get into this in a, in a little bit because we wanted to talk about it but the uh mm. the toxic exposure bill that uh dan had a lot of uh input on to help people out like that's a little bit of input that did a lot of good from a guy who runs a podcast mm -hmm. and I mean smart guy but imagine if he had the ability to like directly influence those people with a lobbying arm so Mike um, what would you have done if you uh, did not join the military well to piggyback off of AJ um, I would say be dead in a ditch for sure yeah but no I don't know man I honestly I didn't have any uh, Further education dreams. College wasn't for me. High school wasn't for me. So I, I don't really uh, think myself as a uh, a college person. Um, I don't know. The military is always kind of my thing. Like my parents were both in the Air Force, and all they talk about how much they love partying in the Air Force. So that's how I saw the military is one big party. So uh, that's why I joined the Navy, so I can drink as much as I want and be covered in tattoos. So, um, no, I don't know. I'd probably be working some blue collar job in Indiana somewhere playing drums in some local metal band on the weekends, getting booed off stage, and living in very affordable Midwest housing. Uh, Mike Sensi and the Cream Pyres. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> okay, so um, I uh, would maybe like to think that you were probably one of those dudes who, um, you know, was kind of like you know, popular for his athletics. You know, you were, mm. a, uh, what, a wide receiver for your football team? I was, yeah. Yeah, still a wide receiver. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I, I could see that. Definitely you being the guy at the bar. It's like, hey, remember that one time no, I caught that no, touchdown? No, 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 no. I would not be that guy. I refuse to be that guy. Granted, my stats, they speak for themselves. But, uh, <laughs> no, I, I I never hung my hat on athletics. Like, I, I wrestled and played football. Like, I enjoyed doing that. But also, I was also the president of the thespian club. So I was a drama nerd. And then yeah. I played, you know, in local bands here and there, drumming. And so I was a little bit of everything. I was a nerd. I was a jock. I was a loser. I was a stoner. I'm a killer, yeah, I'm a yeah. saint, <laughs> I do not feel ashamed. I dabble in all. <laughs> I really hope I nailed those lyrics. You did not. <laughs> Fuck, what, what was it then? Uh, I'm a killer, I'm a saint, uh, AJ loves a smelly taint, I think. Is yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's yeah. it, yeah, yeah, yeah that's okay. It. Hey, AJ, uh, can, we, can we get the uh, the rights to that? Erodius. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I would have to say that if I did not join the military... I was I was doing a lot of underground fighting. Mm. Like um, there's an area in Orlando called Celebration, which is like where all the rich people live and buy houses from Disney. It sounds like the gay district of Orlando. No, it, it really is though. Nice. And but like people with exquisite taste. Oh yeah, for sure. And so uh, there, you know, the different schools in Orlando, you had like the really like bad off ones, and I was kind of like middle of the pack with uh, Boone High School. Yeah. And uh, the uh, the kids that went to like the the technical um, high school. For like the rich people, you know, right? So they would have parties, 
but they, you know, were all losers. So they all paid like, you know, fifty dollars for a gram. No, that was uh, those, from people the, like us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> the, those white guys in the board shorts. Yeah. Yeah, and their parents would be like, "Oh, I'm in a conference in Manila, so you know, you may have uh, friends over and help yourself to the liquor cabinet." And, right. Uh, you know, here's a thousand dollars to hire a band. Yeah. You know, with somebody who the drummer was like an all star in the the Kokomo Cream Pirates. <laughs> No, what what was your um? No, I don't want to ask that because I know that's a security question. <laughs> like, what was your uh, high well, school mascot? Uh, the Kings. Oh, the Kings. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, as I said it, I realized it. <laughs> it. I swear to God, yeah, it was Kings. So um, yeah, we would go there, and uh, then we would place bites uh bets on fights. Uh, so we'd either do bare knuckle or we'd put gloves on. Um, sometimes you know, d- depending on. Uh, how new to like the fighting scene that they were they'd want to wear like headgear or like sure. whatever but so the point being was that we'd go over there we'd beat beat these rich kids up <laughs> drink their liquor sell them overpriced drugs yeah and then leave when they became wise so you just want to be like a land pirate <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> like just you know fighting people and like i'm not going to say that you know i was like I, oh i could have been a contender mm-hmm, but like mm-hmm. i was pretty good you know and uh so i i think i probably would have stuck with that for a while I was doing construction and drywalling. I was a dishwasher. A lot of blue collar jobs. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I don't. I don't really think there would have been a lot for me. Yeah. But I can definitely see some like fucking drug deal going bad, and then yeah. you know the the people that I associated with then always make the best decisions. Very true. And uh, yeah, so I could definitely see me getting shot over fucking an eight ball or something. You know, <laughs> that I didn't even had anything to do with. Well, then you'd have like a cool grave site with a bunch of candles lit, like on the side of the road, or whatever. Like he'd never bother nobody. No, it was Florida. There'd be a b- bunch of meth heads digging my body up to <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> like the the mayor of your town would just be like some alligator at a podium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know how the Vikings had the the Viking send off funeral, mm-hmm. uh, but in uh, in Florida. They put you on a uh, a raft of um, of garbage. Yep. <laughs> and push you off into the ocean, and then saltwater crocodiles <laughs> just come and devour you. That's a Florida burial. Yeah, it's a Florida burial. An Indiana burial is just like they throw you into the biggest cornfield they can find. Everybody just goes, "Oop, oop, oop," and just walks away. <laughs> oop, 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 just bumping into each other. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. So one of our listeners was uh, oddly specific in requesting uh, what you were going to do when you uh, finally retire from the military. Mm. So you're 43 now. Uh, you have another eight years. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm kidding. He's like, uh, you just turned 30. I just turned 46. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll be 38, 39. I'll um, be if if I do 20, I'll be 39 when I retire. Okay. So uh, at 39 years old, mm-hmm. Mike Sensi, yep. uh former high school standout <laughs> yes. and drummer. Yeah. J- true. Yeah, yeah. A stand-up comedian. A um, little. Yeah. Podcast host. Yep. Uh, adult film star. I dabbled. Uh, what are you doing when you retire? Well, the dream is to like just uh, live off disability and retirement pay and just get in an RV, me and my, my Lucy Bear, my puppy. She won't be a puppy. She'll be a dog by then. Uh, we just drive around the country and we... Uh, How long do those dogs live? Uh, at least for a year for this scenario. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not alone immediately. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean like like not, not to... Not to bring it down or anything but like most dogs live like like big dogs live like what eight years no she's her life expectancy is anywhere from 10 to 12 years oh thank god yeah yeah yeah. because i know i'm gonna have to check on you when you uh, get out bro when lucy goes it's it's a wrap it's a wrap for old mike yeah see the the key is to uh you know how you um you know you're interlocked your fields of fire yeah so like you pick up 240 uh fire on a target like 30 seconds before the the mortars finish yeah yeah so like when I see Lucy on her last legs, oh, man. I'm like, oh, look at this puppy. Oh, man, I need so- I need something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so then Lucy, like, sees that you love the new puppy more. And that's what finally tips it over. Uh, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> <laughs> I know this is a fabricated, <laughs> erroneous story, but... Uh, no, no, see, I think uh, you and I and AJ, we all get along so well because we like to hurt our own feelings with hypothetical you, situations. I, as soon as we wrap, I'm going to cry. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to get an RV, and yeah. where are you going? Uh, just every dive bar across the country until my liver fails me completely. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if any of you are in the medical field, uh, <laughs> please invent a synthetic liver. Yeah, yeah. I- I'll pay you. I'll pay you handsomely. And what will you pay them in? Three schmeckles. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say three c- cobs of corn. No, uh, my- oh, well, that's way overpriced. <laughs> if you know anything about Indiana currency, that's way too much. <laughs> so, um, now... With corn, are the the kernels that are on there are those the actual seeds of the corn, or does the corn plant have different seeds? 
I don't want to get into corn uh, science right now just because it's an all-day affair, uh, <laughs> but that is the kernels th- themselves. That is part of the corn. Okay, so how do you how do you turn them into, like, if I take one cob of corn, like, can I can I plant a whole field with that? No, you can plant, uh, you can plant a few plants for sure. Okay, so like three or four? Three or four, yeah. Okay. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> science <laughs> with Mike Sensi. There's your egg for the day. All right, so um, we uh, we'd like to thank uh, the Nut Ruck by Arbor Arms for sponsoring this episode. Absolutely, it's a uh, tactical fanny pack that uh, some of the variations you can actually keep your uh, your pistol and a few mags in. Hell yeah! What would you keep in your Nut Ruck? What what's the scenario? Where am I at? What am I doing? All right, you're at a Jimmy Buffett concert. Nice. Uh, Lucy is uh, healthy and alive. Good. And, uh, in your RV. Good. Good. Happily Good. waiting your turn, not destroying anything. Good. And you are going to the Jimmy Buffett concert. Okay. So I parked the RV, uh, the RV outside the uh, the stadium. Oh, I'm assuming you parked it at Jimmy Buffett's home, and yeah. you guys took his plane there. And we're just good friends. That's fair. Yeah, and he's just going to live forever. That's fair. Yeah. I, I think you will. Um, Jimmy Buffett concert. Uh, for sure, I'd keep uh, keep some kind of handgun in there. Um, probably, probably some ibuprofen. Um, yeah. I was going to say condoms, but why? Because <laughs> <laughs> you'll be with the love of your life. <laughs> and you won't need them. That's fair. That's fair. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. Um. So I'm thinking a little maybe a little Strike Force Energy packets. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Discount code Smoke Pit. Save yourself some money. Absolutely. Put it in your beer, your water, your butthole. Oh Jimmy Buffett's God. butthole. Jimmy Buffett demands you put it in your butthole. Yeah. And his. <laughs> He's gotten kinky in his older age. That's that's why they call him a parrot head. <laughs> <laughs> ah! That's, that's right, the noise that's, he makes when you put it in his butthole. That's right. <laughs> All right. So now different scenario. Yeah. You are a uh, a young man in this scenario. Okay. <laughs> which is clearly not reality. Okay. But um, your family is going on a uh, vacation, uh, I believe, to Europe, and they leave you behind. Okay. <laughs> so what do you have in your fanny pack to so- fight off? The wet bandits. Oh, so so I'm in Europe. I've just been like home alone. No, this is home alone. Oh, oh I'm home alone. You're in, in an unreasonably priced house <laughs> with your RV. Yeah, yeah. And Lucy. Um, I'm keeping a like a Bart Simpson style slingshot for sure. Okay. Uh, no, no, no actual gun with bullets because that's not home alone style. Yeah. Um, I'm keeping. I mean, you can maim them with every other way conceivable. That's that's but that's. You, the, you can't shoot them. That's that's the plan. So, slingshot. Um, I'm thinking like marbles, you know, for tripping scenarios. Yeah. Uh, maybe some gummy bears because I will need to refuel. Yeah, you, you need the sugar, the energy. Some strike force just to make them taste better. And um, then you put it in Marv's butthole. Yes. And, and then and now. Then, <laughs> and then catch his hair on fire. <laughs> now he's a little overzealous and doesn't see the traps. Mm, that's good. Yeah. And then boom, paint can to the face. Boom. Yeah, yeah. And that's how he dies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'm thinking maybe like a smoke bomb. Like okay. a little ninja smoke bomb. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with that. I, I, I just wish I'd carry those like uh, just in daily life. You know, for what I sure. Mean? Yeah, yeah. Like your total's three fifty. Yeah, like, ninja smoke. That's right. Yeah, pocket sand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like the the person like it sees me as I'm running off to my vehicle through yeah. the thin veil of smoke. <laughs> You've tripped twice. <laughs> yeah. your, your knees and elbows are skinned up. Yeah, and he's just like, your coffee costs less than that smoke bomb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that, and you leave the coffee on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember. Uh, and I, I may have told this story before, but fuck it. Uh, mm. But fuck it. Mm. I uh, was uh, leaving formation in Quantico, and we all like to insult each other as we head down the hill to the parking lot. Of course, yeah. So we get dismissed, and we, um, we're we we're, we're shit-talking back and forth, right? And it's like, oh, yeah, like, fuck you, fuck you. And that's about the extent of most people's bantering, right? That's true. And so I'm hitting him with some good, solid fucking jabs, you know? <laughs> like, that's why your fucking mom looks like Spock with them fucked up eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty and good. he's just like, "What would you know about your uh, my mom? You're gay." And Ooh. like at this point, like I'm getting in my vehicle, right? Yeah, yeah. And so as I'm driving off, I roll down my window, and I was like, "That's not what you said when I fucked your mother." <laughs> and I held the note, yeah. so he couldn't say anything back, and exactly. I drove away. That's perfect. Always drive away on the last note, which has been extended. Yes. Yes, I like it. They can't get you back. Absolutely not. Yeah. What are they gonna do? Text you? Fuck you. No. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you and your mother, your Spock looking mother. Like, yeah, can you give me your mom's number? I deleted it because I don't care. <laughs> She's not a person of value in my life. <laughs> yeah, like uh, Shorzy just fucking yeah, exactly. lighting into fucking Riley, uh, Jonesy and Riley. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. So now, last scenario. Okay. 
you are on walkabout in the middle of Australia. Okay. What do you have in your fanny pack? Um, in Australia, whatever combats chlamydia. Uh, okay. For the qualif. Yes. Um, whatever qualifs like to eat, because who doesn't like qualifs? <laughs> yep. Um, probably a, a guide of Australia and all the wildlife that exists there, because yep. everything's trying to kill you. And then a boomerang for sure. Yeah. And then a cro- uh, a copy of Crocodile Dundee on DVD. No, yeah, because sure, you never know when you find a DVD player. That's exactly. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Okay. I was thinking maybe like a sat phone, a GPS, a small ration of water. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, possibly a, a granola bar. Yeah. 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 The one with the berries in it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe some caltrops. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm being chased by whatever indigenous wildlife. Yeah. Yeah. I could throw the caltrops behind me, <laughs> little spikes, you know. Distraction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then whatever fucking nest viper is chasing me. Yeah, it's like, exactly. ah, fuck. <laughs> ah, fuck. <I> fooled again. <laughs> <laughs> you win this time, Sharp. Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, I was watching a video. I posted it on my story. It's a stingray just kind of like floating through the ocean. Yeah. And then out of fucking nowhere, like a, a killer whale shows up and just high yucca bats this shit into oblivion. Like, it comes under it, goes inverted, okay. like Top Gun, yeah, and yeah. then just bats it with its tail. That's dope. And, like, fucking knocks it out, and it's, like, stunned, and it starts sinking to the bottom of the ocean. Whew! Because, like, it didn't even come up to, like, eat it. Like, it didn't need to bat it, you know? Because killer whales are actually assholes. Like, oh, they it, are, yeah, yeah. If you watch the documentary Blackfin, like, it, you feel really bad for, like, Shamu and all those in captivity, but however, you learn that you're, they're just naturally assholes, and they like to fucking, like, play with their food, and if it's, like, a seal or, like, a sea lion... They'll, like, throw that shit up in the air, like, 40 feet yeah. while it's still alive. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're assholes. Yeah, and so it's like, it didn't even eat the stingray. It was just like, this is for Steve Irwin. Yeah, exactly. Bap! <laughs> 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 Fucking TKO'd him. <laughs> okay, so anything else you want to talk about before we head out? Nah, man. I love you, and uh, I wish you nothing but the best in your future endeavors. I, I really appreciate that. Anytime, bro. Uh, Mike fucking Sensi. That's right. Uh, so, a, uh, a closing note. Uh, sometimes it's safer to hold it all in, where the only person who can judge you is yourself. However, we all need to vent from time to time. So maybe reach out to someone you haven't talked to in a while, maybe someone you served with, you went to school with, or you know maybe somebody that you work with, but you don't necessarily have those conversations. Just check on them. And sometimes you can uh, find that through helping others, you find a cathartic release in yourself. Because if you have the purpose that you're there for other people, it gives your own life a little bit more meaning. So if you're struggling... Don't keep it all in. Maybe strike up a conversation with somebody. And, uh, you know, after they've had their opportunity to vent, then, you know, you take yours. I love it. All right. Make sure you listen to us on uh, various platforms. Check out our social media. And if you're on an Apple Podcast app, please give us a five-star rating. We'd appreciate that. Bye. Bye. Bye.